Hi guys! Uh, this week I thought I'd do another modern figure for you because it's been a while and I think I've only actually done, ever done one modern figure uh, since I started doing videos. And I have picked out this particular model. This guy is from Militia Miniatures. They're a fairly new company. Uh, they haven't been around all that long. They just recently held and uh, successfully funded a Kickstarter to sort of produce their first range of figures. And uh, I think they, you can now just buy all the, of the different figures directly from their website. And this guy is one of them. It's not a huge range yet, but I suspect it will increase with time. And a lot of these units are sort of just generic, modern sort of combat type figures. I mean, some of them look like specific sort of army units, but more more of them than not are just sort of more sort of like, I don't know, contractors or just private sort of type people um, that are very sort of applicable for a lot of things. The other reason I really like these figures is since most of them are sort of more generic, uh, you don't ha feel bound so much to paint them as one particular type of unit. They just have sort of these sort of generalized military type clothes and have this sort of general military equipment most of the time. And they're often sort of supposed to be kind of individuals with personalities, so they're wearing their own sort of own clothing and sort of styling it their own way, which is really nice for my purposes because it means I don't have to feel bound to just do one thing. And it gives me an opportunity to show you some techniques or some patterns or something like that that I might otherwise not be able to, and I, I can just sort of mix and match as it suits me. Uh, with this figure, uh, I thought I would show you another camo pattern since those seem so very popular. This time I am going to be showing you the uh, classic American sort of ERDL pattern or the sort of later variant of it is actually the woodland pattern. At this scale you're probably not going to see a lot of difference between the two. They're quite similar. I mean there's some subtle vari variations but yeah at 28 millimeter this it won't make a lot of difference so you could probably use this tutorial for either of those, so the ERDL is nice if you're planning to do some sort of Vietnam era guys, but this shouldn't be taken as any sort of specific unit. Once again, this is just a guy who's going to have some pants on probably with this sort of woodland ERDL pattern on them. And depending on how things go, I may also show you some other techniques for painting some other sort of patterns on this soldier. I haven't quite decided yet, but I think he'll be a sort of a fun and sort of interesting break from just painting sort of uh, standard um, sort of specific units. So I think that's everything. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Now, there's not a huge difference between ODL and the later forest pattern, well at least at this scale. I mean there are subtle differences, but when you're painting 28mm you're not going to notice them very much, so you can kind of use the same techniques for whatever you're doing when you're painting models basically. You might want to look at the two patterns because there are some slight color changes and adjustments you might need to make, but it's nothing too major. I'm using a base coat here of Vallejo Medium Olive because this sort of medium green color is one of the main sort of base colors at sort of the lowest level of the pattern. And the color that you're going to see sort of the sort of second most frequency is sort of a medium brown color and this will appear over the green in pretty large spots. Uh, I mean you can think of it also, you could have also painted the pants really this brown color and then put really big green spots on it. It would have worked out similar, but I found that this was just easier for my purposes. So what I'm using here is German um, camouflage medium brown uh, is my base for these spots. And you can see I'm just putting on pretty large, actually really large, rounded kind of brown blobs. And you want these to appear pretty frequently. You want them to be pretty dense in this particular pattern. And we're continuing now moving up from sort of the largest areas of color to sort of the increasingly smaller, finer areas. So the next kind of spot I'm applying is sort of a light, sandy cream color. This seems to vary from actually batch to batch of this fabric, and you'll see this being a lot of different tones. So you've got some leeway here. The color I settled on was um, some dark sand, and I actually even mixed a little bit of that medium brown from the last step into it, just to darken it down slightly because I thought it was a little too light and bright by itself. And now these spots are 
uh, fairly frequent in the pattern, but they need to be a little bit, feel a little bit more delicate. So you can see they're kind of like amoeba-like blobs with sort of long rounded points and bits coming off of them. But you know, they, they, need, to, they need to be fairly delicate. And uh, you want, again, the one thing I noticed about the, this pattern is that you really see a really high density of shapes on it, you know? Something like the splinter pattern, you know, actually has a lot less density of things on it, I think. And so this, you really want to just really load up the whole surface, really fill every space possible with uh, designs and patterns. You don't want to leave very, any sort of real empty gaps, and that's a, a thing to keep in mind. I found that when I was painting this lighter color, I had to go back over the spots in a couple places because this paint is lighter and I'm painting over such dark paint underneath that there's some transparency and you, you may need to build it up a little bit so that you don't have those brown and green areas really showing through when you, um, or after you finish applying these. The fourth and final um, color in this pattern is really almost black, but I don't really like to make anything just solid black. I like to make it a slight shade. So I've mixed a little bit of that uh, medium olive into it, just a slight amount, just to give it an ever so subtle green cast, just because I don't want it to be pure, pure black. Now, this color, uh, 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 that's gonna occur pretty often, but in very small, um, amounts and I actually and I recommend you do to switch to a smaller brush for this because these need to be very fine so I'm using a number zero brush here instead of a number one and these <clears throat> little sort of dark blobs the easiest way to think about painting them is they're usually sort of a line so you should paint sort of a central line either horizontally or sort of vertically at a slant and then it sort of has little branches coming off of it often sort of to the top and to the bottom and off to the sides and these and these should never be too large you can even put some very small ones here and there just that are really just dots or single lines and there should be quite a few of these in the pattern but I noticed that they almost always sort of border on or touch either the light cream sand color or the brown spots they're almost never just out by themselves in the middle of the green but if you did this right you probably won't have that many just really open green areas left anyway so but you want to put a lot of these down as i said you really want really dense coverage of the pattern uh, for this to look good but use the small brush and really just make some really small lines and here you can see I'm just taking the lighter color again and making a few adjustments here and there where I feel like I didn't get enough of that color and you may need to go back and do that as well with the other colors. And when you've got a really dense complicated uh, camo pattern like this it's easiest often to shade it after you finish the pattern by using washes and I've done that before I've used this technique before on say the pea pattern and the oak leaf pattern and I'm gonna do it again here. I've got some Agrix Earthshade here. Um, I have actually, you can't see that, but I've actually recommend you thin it a little bit with water so it's not too powerful. And then you're just gonna to wanna to go and start applying it in areas where there would be shade, like between his legs, sort of where there would be shadows falling because of equipment, and down on any recesses, any creases, any seams along the edges of any different pieces of fabrics, like that. And you, you put it on thin to begin with, and you're gonna to wanna to sort of gradually build it up. So the areas with the least amount of shadow, you maybe only wanna need one or two coats, and then you keep building it up in excessive layers down in the really deep folds and creases to get sort of increasingly darker colors and a darker sort of shade going on in those locations, basically. So you can see I just go around, apply it sort of everywhere where it needs on the figure, and I keep going around again as the last layer dried and applying more and more and building it up where I feel like I need it. I finished off this shading with the wash process with some non oil because I felt like I really wanted some really high contrast in a few areas and that I really you should, I recommend you really only use that sparingly for emphasis so I really put that uh, only down in very deep folds and creases and then only a very little bit because it's a real powerful color and it it's it will you know mess up your um, your pattern here if you use it too much so I really only recommend you put it in very small sort of areas where you really need really deep strong sort of color going on. Now I wouldn't do this on all patterns but after the wash is dry I decided I would go back and sort of highlight some key areas. Uh, that's what I kind of like to do. Highlighting really helps your camo patterns look great, really brings them to the next level. 
but you can't, but the trick, you know, and to keep it practical is to use it sort of sparingly as a technique. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of make lighter versions of every color in the pattern. So I'm starting out here with that, that sort of dark sand color, but I've mixed some buff into it to lighten it up more. So what I'm doing now is instead of looking for the recess areas, like I was before when I was shading the pants, I'm now gonna look for areas where I'd expect a whole bunch of light to hit instead. And you can see I'm gonna then be emphasizing um, that those areas then extra with the lighter color. And I'm gonna, now I'm gonna do the same thing with the brown. I'm mixing again buff into that medium um, camouflage brown and I'm going to be applying it to any brown areas of the pattern where I would expect there to be more light hitting. I'm just doing this real carefully. Using a number zero brush is a good idea here. It'll be a little bit easier to control. And so yeah, so I'm, I'm only really looking for areas where light hits. So you can see I'm focusing on his knees, his, his sort of his butt, his calves. Um, the tops of any really prominent creases and just kind of putting a little color there. Um, and, now, and then I'm going to continue. I'm going to do it with a sort of really dark black color here. You can see you're going to probably have to lighten it quite substantially uh, to, for it to really show as a highlight. So then I'm going to do those really small black areas the same way. And I'm just going to keep repeating that process, adding this sort of extra highlight emphasis. It's really important if I'm particularly in the pockets because there's a lot of sort of seams in those sort of side pockets on his pants. And, it, and it's especially after shading, you can kind of lose some of the differences because they are because you really want a strong contrast between sort of the dark seams on those pants and sort of the highlighted top areas. So you'll want to focus on those too. I'm actually going to finish off by making a lighter version of the green now, again by mixing in a little bit of buff and just kind of going over any areas of green on the pattern that are where there should be light hitting. And the way this is going to be, you're actually going to find yourself really painting pretty tiny areas for the most part. And this seems a little tiresome, but it actually goes quite a bit faster than you would think, just because this pattern is fairly, still fairly open, and the number of areas where you actually have to apply these highlight colors is not actually all that much. With the pants uh, finished, I'm gonna be moving on to some other areas of the uniform. Uh, here I'm base coating both his boots and his, um, his bulletproof vest, which I just kind of decided were both going to be sort of grays or blacks. I'm going to make them a little bit different and distinct from one another, but they still both should sort of start out with a, with a simple black uh, base coat being applied. And then I'm going to apply a first highlight to both the boots and the vest of German gray. And this is basically going to be going on pretty much at all areas that are not sort of seams or sort of dividing lines in the sculpt. Um, and after that, uh, how I'm going to paint these two areas is going to change a little bit. I'm going to leave the boots alone for the moment and really focus on the vest a little bit more. And I want the vest to get lighter and be a slightly different tone than the boots. <clears throat> so. What I'm going to be doing after I get this initial German gray on here is I am going to start mixing lighter colors to highlight the vest by mixing some Vallejo neutral gray into the German gray and creating progressive highlights. And I also want to have a slight tone because I don't like just flat gray, especially in clothing. So I'm going to be taking some Vallejo blue gray and just mixing a small amount of that into the color that I'm working with here every time just to give it a slight blue tinge, very subtle, but so it's obviously there. So I'm just mixing a little blue of the blue gray in every time to lighten it. Neutral gray if I need it, but the blue gray is actually a pretty good lightening color too. So I'm lightening it really mostly with the blue gray and I'm just going to keep going over it, adding gradually more in and sort of applying it to sort of higher and higher areas of color. I'm really emphasizing his shoulders, sort of the top of his back and obviously all the tops of all those pockets on his front, on the front of his vest and, all, and sort of all those sort of areas. Um, and just keep going up in color until you've reached a point where you know you're satisfied. I think my very last gray that I put on was quite light, and I really only use that as an edge highlight, sort of along the edges of his, um, of the openings of his vest, and around sort of the edges of all those sort of pouches and pockets that are on the front area. And on the back, you uh, you can see I'm doing quite a bit of feathering and kind of blending there, so that I can get sort of a nice light highlight on the sort of top fr top or sort of the main part of the vest, but it sort of blends out nicely and gets really dark down towards the side areas. 
I'm now gonna handle the boots in a very similar way to how I handle the vest, but I'm not gonna be using that blue gray to lighten them. I'm really only gonna be using the neutral gray. So I'm gonna be applying a couple of layers where I sort of progressively uh, make lighter shades by mixing more and more neutral gray in. And you can kind of do this to taste, and you just keep doing it until the boots are as light as you want. Uh, as you can see, as, like, as I lighten the color, I sort of progressively focus more on emphasizing the heels, um, the toes, uh, sort of any sort of seams that are the edges, sort of edge highlights or laces on the boots and just kind of building that up. You can probably do this in only maybe two or three layers if you want to, but I, I, you know, sometimes when I get started with this, it's easy to just keep adding a little lighter color to your paint and just quickly making more layers. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, I finished off then by taking some of the German camouflage medium brown and mixing it into the lightest gray shade I had. So I got a very slightly brownish uh, light gray. <clears throat> And then I applied that on the heels and toes kind of lightly. And I did that sort of to give it a sort of worn, scuffed look. Uh, you can also, the other thing I did there, I applied a black wash with known oil. And that was just to get a little bit more contrast and depth down in the recesses of the boots. But I would consider that optional. Now I promised you I might do something else special with this figure and I'm going to, I'm going to paint this uh, scarf in a kind of interesting way. I'm going to make it look kind of like a kefia, which is, if I pronounce that right, it's a traditional sort of Palestinian uh, head scarf uh, that a lot of guys wear there in that region. But it's become really popular, I've noticed, with just Western soldiers and just people who are operating in that area. So it's something you kind of expect a mercenary that they might have that. It's kind of an intricate pattern uh, with either black or white uh, checks on it. Uh, so what I'm doing here is base coating the whole scarf to start out with, with some uh, silver gray. I'm then going to shade the folds with a very, very thin down Agrax Earth Shade Wash. And now you can see I'm going to start highlighting the scarf up to a white because the, 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 um, that gray was really just the base color. So I'm taking here a thin down, just white paint, and I'm going to start applying it to all the tops of the folds and creases. And it's fairly transparent, so as always with sort of whites, you're going to need to build it up a little bit. You're going to need to probably apply a couple layers. Your first layer should pretty much cover everything thinly, and then later layers you want to just keep uh, emphasizing the higher creases and folds and the areas where light is hitting and just repeat that process until you've got a sort of a nice bright uh, smooth even layer uh, where you need the white to be. Now the pattern on one of these uh, scarves is actually pretty complicated and there's actually a fair number of different variants on the pattern <clears throat> but basically you tend to have some sort of thick border stripes around the base, probably two with a sort of a fine pattern in between them. And then up above that, you'll have a, a sort of slightly different uh, kind of pattern that's a little bit uh, different looking. So I'm starting out here by painting the really wide uh, base lines. And this is not gonna look exactly like an accurate representation of one of these scarves, but it's the idea is to sort of give you that general impression. I'm sort of simplifying it and scaling it down for 28 millimeter. <clears throat> I recommend here that you work with a number zero brush because you're going to have to paint a lot of fine, delicate lines and it'll be a little bit easier to control. Uh, I'm using black paint here, but I've also got white on standby because when you're doing this kind of line work, you're going to make, inevitably, you're going to make some mistakes and get what lines too wide or make a blob you don't want. It's easiest if you just have some white and you can just immediately clean those up right off. So after, you, and you can see because this is a scarf, it's going to be really wrinkled and folded. So I'm sort of making those wide lines get narrower and come together at the back, sort of an idea that the folds have come together and they just kind of become obscured and compressed. You can kind of see it doesn't have to be perfect here. Now, now what I'm going to do within that, I'm making just a very fine uh, check pattern. This is a little bit fiddly, but I'm making you know a series of horizontal and then vertical lines that are very fine. This is why you really want your number one brush. And uh, it's it's very possible you'll mess it up like I did. And that's why you need that white paint so you can just really go back in and clean up those squares, uh, clean up those little white squares, make sure the lines are not too thick and that they're nice and even looking. But you just want to get sort of the idea idea here of just the sort of basically the sort of a fine check pattern it doesn't have to be perfect and as you can see it sort of diminishes towards the back I'm then going to in the area up above I'm going to paint a check pattern well you want it sort of going at the lines going off sort of at diagonal slants the check pattern shouldn't be straight but you should you know make it look a little diagonal I'm going to paint the lines here should be further apart 
Um, it can be a little bit thicker, so you're, you're going for the same check idea, but now it should be a bigger, uh, wider space pattern, basically. And, you know, it is, again, it doesn't have to be perfect everywhere because the scarf kind of folds and bunches and it's going to get obscured, you know, it's going to obscure the pattern quite a bit in places. I'm then going to highlight a few areas of the black line work where I think a lot of light would be hitting so that you can, so there can be more of a sort of a emphasis on those areas and, you know, sort of differentiate from areas where there's deep folds and creases. So I've taken some neutral gray basically and lightened my black with it a lot. So I now have a sort of a medium gray color and I'm just going to apply that very carefully to areas of the line work where I want to feel like there's light hitting. Again, like on the camo pattern, you don't have to feel like you need to do this everywhere. You just need to pick sort of strategic areas that you want to emphasize. And again, keep some white paint on hand because you're still going to probably make some messes while you're doing this and you want to be able to just kind of qu quickly clean those up as you go. Finally, I'm going to finish the kefi off in the same way that I uh, did with the pants, basically, because we've got a complicated, detailed pattern here, so I'm going to use some washes to get a little extra shading going. So I've taken some very thin down uh, Nuln Oil here, very thin down, I should say, because, you know, it's a potent wash, and I'm going to be carefully pin washing it down into sort of folds and creases in the scarf as uh, best as I can, just so that I can emphasize better that there are sort of darker areas on the scarf and then sort of lighter uh, brighter areas. Depending on how this goes, you may also want to go back afterwards and add some white, re sort of highlight some of the white areas on the scarf if you ended up shading a little bit more than you wanted to. Now, uh, I'm pretty happy with how that worked out, so I'm going to be painting some kind of the rest of the accessories on this guy now. Uh, I decided that I would go ahead and paint his um, gloves and his belt and sort of that pack on the back of his belt and sort of a, sort of a sort of generic sort of khaki type color. So uh, I'm just base coating those areas first using um, Vallejo khaki. And uh, after that's dry, I'm going to go ahead and take a pretty heavy wash of Agrax Earthshade and put that everywhere just so that I can get some, you know, better shading and emphasis down in all of the recesses. And then you're just going to highlight the khaki areas. And I'm going to do that by mixing um, progressive um, amounts of Iraqi sand into my khaki. So my first uh, highlight here is pretty subtle. There's just not too much of the Iraqi sand in going in there. And you can see I'm going to be applying that pretty much everywhere. Um, just kind of and blending it out a little bit on larger areas so that there's some darker shaded areas and you know that I leave all the seams and dividing lines obviously with the darker color and I'll just I'll probably I think I applied maybe two or three layers progressively with more and more um, Iraqi sand added into them. My final one I actually instead of taking khaki and adding the Iraqi sand and I went the opposite direction so I took pure Iraqi sand and I just darkened it down um, a little bit with the khaki. Sometimes that's a better way to go if you want a color on the lighter side of things. And that color I really blended out a lot and I really used it mostly as sort of an edge highlight. So sort of along the top of the belt and sort of all the seams on that pack he's wearing, that kind of thing, just on the, on the tops and fronts of his fingers. So that was really sort of my last real emphasis color. And you can really go as high and light on this or as dark as you want because there's such a variety of these sort of khaki utility colors that would be worn and you know so it, uh, you have a big acceptable range that'll look good and it's really kind of up to you to decide you know where you want to go with that. Um, now his gun here, it's, I'm not exactly sure what it is because, you know, these, I honestly get confused by all these different sort of modern um, guns and it's some kind of um, machine gun, modern sort of machine gun with that sort of style, barrel style clip on it. I'm basically kind of going under the assumption the majority of it's going to be kind of a black plastic with sort of a metal barrel. So I'm going to be base coating most of the gun here just with black. I'm also going to paint the handle of his big knife there in black. Um, and then after I finish that, I'm going to take some German camouflage black brown and I'm going to use that as a base coat on um, the sheath of his dagger because I, I decided I kind of wanted that to look like sort of a brown leather color basically. I'm then going to work on the metal areas of the figure. So I'm base coating them here with a mixture as usual of German um, gray and some Valer Air gun metal and going for a dark metallic gray. And I'm going to be applying this here to all the sort of the gun parts that are metal, so the barrel and stuff, and also the magazine, because I think that's probably going to be metal. I'm also going to apply it to the sort of the pommel and guard on his dagger and the sort of some snaps and 
you know, those kinds of things on his uniform. And then I'm going to just take some pure gun metal. I'm going to use that to sort of very lightly highlight all these areas because especially on these modern weapons, things are not very bright, shiny metal usually. You really want to go subtle. So I'm going to, especially on the magazine, I'm going to sort of apply it really along the edges to sort of simulate some chipping and wear. And on the gun barrel, I'm going to apply it sort of almost as a light overbrush just to give some slight shiny highlighting in those areas. And on the um, dagger parts and the snaps, you can feel free to make it a little brighter and shinier because I would expect those to be sort of higher, more, you know, blingy looking metal. I'm then going to quickly highlight his sheath of his dagger. I'm going to apply sort of an overall highlight of Bay Brown Medium from Foundry on most of it. And I'm going to go back in with some chestnut um, shade and I'm going to apply that lightly, sort of an edge highlight, sort of blending it outwards, sort of to get that warmth and sort of extra wear on the edges and then finish off with chestnut medium as I always do. And that being going on is a very subtle edge highlight with some like sort of fine lines to show sort of like damage a little bit or sort of some distressing going on. That's really going to should be a very subtle edge highlight on all of your leather areas of the finger. After that, I am going to finish this figure off by just quickly highlighting the non-metal areas on the gun, so the plastic parts that are going to be, I don't know, they're not really going to be shiny. Uh, I, this is really simple. I just took some of the German gray and I mixed in a little bit of neutral gray to lighten it and I'm just applying it as sort of an edge highlight on sort of to define the different sort of parts in the gun. You can't really see too much, so you probably only need maybe one or two sort of extra highlight layers on here, especially since you want this gun to stay pretty dark uh, looking compared to you know some of the other areas. Now once I finished I decided the vest just didn't look quite blue enough relative to his gun or his boots and I wanted it to be distinctly you know have a really distinct blue cast and since I didn't do that I just emphasized that further by taking some or taking some of the Citadel Azurman blue wash and just applying it thickly everywhere. Okay, and here is our completed sort of modern soldier of fortune, military contractor type figure, whatever you want to think of him as. Uh, I had a lot of fun on this figure because he was a great chance to just sort of kind of do what I wanted and, you know, use him as a good way to demonstrate some interesting techniques like the forest camo and the um, sort of Palestinian scarf. <coughs> which are both elements that are really useful on sort of more modern era figures. But the scarf, you're going to see a lot on being worn by modern soldiers, and especially in the Middle East, and of course those pants, they work for a lot of different periods. And I really, I think that pattern came out really nicely on the pants, and I'm also really pleasantly surprised by how well I was able to sort of simulate the scarf. It's obviously not a perfect representation because it's a complex pattern, but I think what, what I did here really makes for kind of a good representation, kind of how those stars sort of generally look. Um, and of course, if you didn't want to go to the trouble of painting that pattern, because it is a lot of trouble, you could set, just really make his scarf a plain color. You could go for a green or a gray, whatever you like. Red if you're feeling artistic, but probably not a realistic color, because it would really draw attention that people are not going to want when they're actually fighting. But, you know, that's all up to you. You know, you can let your creativity run wild with these type of figures, which is really, as I said in the beginning, one reason I really love them. Uh, so again, if you enjoyed this video, please uh, let me know what you thought. Uh, please like the video, share it with your friends. Um, definitely, um, you know, subscribe to my channel if you haven't gotten around to doing so already, so that I can, you know, you know, you can keep up with what I'm doing, what the latest is. Um, and I think that's all for now. So uh, I will see you next time.